In this video, we're going to be looking at two examples in which we're going to be finding the derivative or the slope of inverse points. Um, this is how the problem is stated in the textbook, so I wanted you to be familiar with it, so that's why I'm, I'm doing it in this kind of this format right here. It looks kind of strange the way it's worded, but let's kind of uh, decode and make sure we understand that it is asking us to find the slopes of inverse points. Okay, the problem's going to read, find the derivative, the prime is here, find the derivative of the inverse at some given x value, which they're calling a, okay, for the function 1 fourth x cubed plus x minus 1. So here's our regular function. Uh, it does have some kind of inverse, and that inverse we want to find the slope at the a, uh, the a value. Okay, so let's find the slope on the inverse at a for this function and the given real number a equals 3. So it's just specifically telling us that um, we're going to evaluate the inverse at 3. Well, we don't evaluate the derivative of the regular function at 3. We evaluate the derivative of the regular function at the y-coordinate for a equals 3. Okay, so if this is the x on the inverse, that is if 3 is the x-coordinate on the inverse, then 3 must be the y-coordinate on the regular function. Okay, so Something, let's kind of get our plan together. We're going to actually differentiate, not plug in a, or 3, if you will. Okay, what do we plug in? Okay, we'll have to find that. And once we do find that and evaluate the derivative of f at that value, we're going to find its reciprocal. So for these, these problems, there's, it's multi-stepped, and so we have to kind of get our mind wrapped around the, the steps that we're going to take. I guess the first thing that we're going to do is maybe find um, the, the value that we're going to plug into this derivative. Okay, so we're going to come over here and just make a note to ourselves what we're doing step by step. It kind of keeps us on track here. So perhaps as a first step, before I actually differentiate here, why don't I find the x that belongs to this function when the y-coordinate is 3? So we're finding x when y, or a as they call it, is 3 on f of x. Okay, so if 3 is the y on the regular graph, well, what does that look like? Well, we plug 3 in for f of x, because it's the y, not the x, and we solve. Okay. Solving this equation right here will allow us to find the x-coordinate that I'm going to plug into the derivative and then reciprocate. All right, so here we have this situation where we have to solve this equation for x. As you might can imagine, if I were to solve for 0, bring the 3 over, I'm going to have a cubic equation, uh, and, I, and I can't factor that. Okay, so at this point, I think our, our, um, our next step is going to be just to actually use a calculator. So what you're going to do on your calculator is you're going to let 3 be y1 and y2 can be this cube right here. And you're just going to set a good window and find the intersection. Okay, just find the x-coordinate when uh, the y is 3. So y1, y2, find an intersection. All right, and to save time, I went ahead and did that, and I got x equals 2. But if I'm you and I'm sitting there, I'm thinking I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to grab my calculator, and I'm going to type this in as y1. This is type, type it in as y2. And please verify that the x-coordinate of that point, or section, point of intersection is 2. 2, 3 should be the point that belongs on the cube graph. And that's what it tells us. And that might be something good to write down. You don't have to, but just to kind of put our minds around what I just found. Okay? When x is 2, 2, y is 3, so 2, 3 is on f of x. Okay? Another way to write that notation is to write it this way. f evaluated at 2 gives us 3. So either in ordered pair format, or this is more descriptive, that 2, 3 is a point on f. All right, likewise, you know what else we know? We know that um, 3, 2 is on the inverse. Not that you have to write this down, but I, I, like I said, I, I think it really keeps us connected to what's going on in the problem. Um, and another way to write this in ordered pair format is the inverse evaluated at 3 gives 2. All right, so now we kind of have a plan. What we're going to do is we're going to find the derivative of f of x. We're going to plug in 2, and we're going to reciprocate, and we'll have the slope um, on the inverse at 3. 
Okay, so now let's find f prime at 2. So putting the function right down here in front of us so that in my next step I can find the derivative. Uh, power rule, 1 fourth times 3 is 3 fourths, x squared. The derivative of the remaining terms would just result in plus 1. Okay, that's the derivative of the function. Now we don't want to plug in 3 because 3 is the y on this function. We want to plug in a 2. And this will give us the slope of the graph on the function at the inverse point. Completing all the necessary calculations, it looks like when I do that, I'm going to get um, 4. Okay, and just to save some space, I'm going to come up over here. Okay, and I'm going to state what I'm doing next. So now I'm actually going to find the slope on the inverse. I need that derivative notation to represent the slope. The slope on the inverse at 3. That's what was requested of me up here. Okay, and thinking back to the, the derivative of an inverse function given in the previous video in the theorem, here's the relationship. The slope on the inverse at 3 is equal to the reciprocal 1 over f prime evaluated at 2. So 1 over 4 and we're done. No simplifying needed. Okay, a lot of steps there to, to put together, but uh, if you just kind of break it down, we had to um, find the, the x-coordinate on the regular function by allowing this a value to be our y, set the y value equal to the function, find the x, so that when I found the derivative, I could plug that x in so I could reciprocate. All right, let's take a look at another example, the one that involves trig. Okay, for our second example, we're um, asked to find the slope on the inverse at a, and I'm kind of peeking into the end of the problem here, when a is a half. Okay, for this regular function, f of x equals sine x, but um, x is defined only on this interval. So even a lot more going on here. But thinking about the steps that we did in the previous example, So like the previous problem, let's go ahead and find um, the x value at which the y value is a half on the regular function, okay? Because this is the y that belongs to the regular function. So that's going to be our first step. All right, so let's find x when y equals a equals a half on f of x. So let's set that equation up here. So the y coordinate is 1 half and that's going to equal sine x. Okay, Again, you could do this on your calculator, y1, y2, find the point of intersection, but this is something that we should be able to do without a calculator, um, thinking about um, our background from pre-cal. Uh, this is saying uh, at what angle x is the y coordinate a half as long as you only look at this restri restricted domain. So as a quick visual right here, if you think about the unit circle and you think about angles from negative pi over 2, which fall down here, okay, to positive pi over 2, we're only looking at this part of the unit circle. So what angle has a y-coordinate of positive 1 half over here? Well, that's going to clearly put us in quadrant 1, and it just requires us knowing our trig values. So the y-coordinate is 1 half at pi over 6. So our only solution, based on this restricted interval, is going to be x equals pi over 6. All right, and just to kind of think about what we did, just find something similar that, to what we did um, previous up here. Okay, what that tells us is that pi over 6 comma 1 half, okay, that ordered pair is on the function. 
And that makes sense, because if pi over 6 is my input for x, then my output is a half. The sine at pi over 6 is a half. And another way that you might see that is in function notation that f evaluated at pi over 6 is 1 half. Okay, and for inverse points, we know we just reverse, so we switch. So if 1 half is the x, then pi over 6 is the y. And that occurs on the inverse function. And using function notation, it would look something like this. All right, so next step, let's go ahead and find the derivative. So we're going to find f prime, but we're going to also evaluate it at pi over 6. So, all right, so let's get the function down here in front of us again. All right, thinking about what we know from calculus, the derivative is cosine. and evaluating it at pi over 6. This just requires us to know the other trig value at pi over 6. So the x coordinate at pi over 6 is square root of 3 over 2. Okay, so that's our slope. That's our derivative, that's our slope, and so we just know to reciprocate it, and then we're going to have the slope on the inverse at um, x equals 1 half, or as I call it, a equals 1 half. Okay, so I'm going to come back up here like I did in the previous problem. And say now, let's find the slope prime on the inverse at 1 half. Okay. And that's going to be the reciprocal of the derivative evaluated at pi over 6. So we have everything we need. We're just putting notation to everything. So 1 over, what was it, square root of 3 over 2? Multiply by the reciprocal. Clean it up a little bit. We don't usually want to leave complex fractions. You don't have to rationalize, but it's not. It, it's, it's just common practice to go ahead and simplify complex fractions, meaning a fraction inside of a fraction. So 2 over square root of 3. Not necessary to rationalize. That's a good answer right there. All right, so two examples of how we're going to use the theorem that gives us the derivative of inverse functions. Very multi-stepped, but hopefully this keeps us on track of what we need to do.